no, no, no. More could be this flag. It's been a while since we had a Star Wars title that doesn't focus on Jedi, the Force, or lightsabers. So it was amazing to see that Star Wars Outlaws proved to us that there's plenty of room in the galaxy for a blaster-toned smuggler trying to make her mark. But the mark she leaves is a blessing in disguise that embodies a high sense of adventure from being a galactic outlaw, and also something that's a little rough around many edges. Getting into Star Wars Outlaws, I had an idea of what kind of adventure I was getting myself into. A space flying, double crossing, rootin' tootin' blaster shootout of a time. And for the most part, I was right. You take on the shoes of Kay Vess, a scoundrel trying to make a name for herself in the criminal underworld while trying to earn her freedom. Alongside her trusty yet insert cute and mischievous ammo companion tropier buddy Nyx, and badass enforcer droid ND5, you face with slightly engaging combat encounters, a vast and beautiful open world to explore, and glitches. Lots and lots of glitches. It's not a total loss, however. Outlaws does get a few things right to my surprise. Scurrying along the galaxy in a roughly 17 hour campaign, you quickly realize that this is one of the more interesting Star Wars titles to be told. One with no force powers or Jedi's to clog up the narrative, Outlaws shines in showing a new part of the galaxy, one filled with scoundrels, betrayal, and quick thinking. There are four different factions K needs to be careful around. The Pikes, the Huts, Agasha Clan, and Crimson Dawn, each with their own set of jobs to complete and territories they control. Each decision you make alongside your journey changes your relationship with these groups. I found myself carefully deciding which actions to take as to not piss off the other factions all too much, until I realized the choices you have have very little effect on how the story plays out, and raising each faction practically just leads to getting new fashion gears and cheaper items in the merchant territory. Speaking of territories, Outlaws manages to capture the feeling of being a scoundrel for each of the five planets you get to explore. The deserts of Tatooine are filled with settlements and bandit camps itching to pick a fight with you, while the icy towns of Kajim are filled with shady deals and patrons who just as quickly take your wallet and fill you full of blaster lasers. Once you unlock the speeder bike, however, these areas open themselves up to some truly breathtaking sights that make me really appreciate the time to explore and discover new areas around each planet. Once you're done taking the sights, you quickly realize that that's pretty much all Star Wars Outlaws gets right. You would think that being a Ubisoft title, that stealth would be one of the key aspects of Outlaw that they nailed perfectly. But sadly, every opportunity is nothing more than an extremely unpredictable AI in the worst of terms. At times, it was way too easy to dispatch an entire group of enemies, making me wonder if every guard on the planet was as blind as the stormtroopers aim. And other times, I would trigger their alarm even though I clearly haven't been seen or noticed by anyone. When you do eventually get noticed and have to blast your way out of an area, Outlaws provides some basic cover-based shooting that adds nothing new besides getting into cover and shooting until there's no more. Kay does have some interesting varieties when it comes to disposing of her foes, such as a Red Dead Redemption-like Deadeye mode, or different mods to change up the aspects of your blaster, which is surprisingly your only permanent weapon throughout the game. Sure, you can pick up and use any weapon dropped by an enemy, but Kay drops anything she picks up with any type of action she does. It's almost like they went out of their way to make you drop everything. But as clunky and basic as it is, it still beats Outlaw's awkward approach to speeder bike chases and space dogfights. Actually, I rather enjoyed Outlaw's space combat section. It was a nice way to break up the gameplay and to not feel repetitive, but oftentimes it lacked any sort of challenge enough to make me even want to warrant any type of ship upgrades. At launch, Outlaw is plagued with more bugs than an Arizona swamp in the summer. Not surprising, given how Ubisoft has a reputation for releasing bug-filled games at launch, but this time I expect a little bit better than graphical glitches, speeder bikes that crash into thin air, audio cutouts, and the most frustrating of all, mission objectives that refuse to spawn, having you reset far-off checkpoints. All in all, Star Wars Outlaws tries its best to be a unique addition to the galaxy, but fails at every attempt except for being a scenic open world sandbox. A unique story and beautiful landscapes can't smuggle away Outlaws' repetitive gameplay and game-breaking bugs. A sad bounty of 4 out of 10. <laughs>